there are people who should have died a long time ago. People who have lived truly impossible survival stories. These people who defrauded the Grim Reaper have stories straight out of a Hollywood film. And in more than one case, Hollywood has profited from their wild stories. In some cases, these are simply people who were unlucky but managed to get through it. In others, extraordinary people demonstrated true grit and unbreakable will. These stories demonstrate how far our survival instinct can go and what some people are willing to do when it comes down to life or death. When it came down to fight or flight, these people chose to fight and win. You're watching Get Curious where you get your nose off your curiosity. Here are 9 lucky people who cheated death and survived the impossible. But before we begin, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time we upload a video like this. Let's get started with number 1. Teenage Hero Anthony Borges, a teen, was shot 5 times while using his body to close the classroom door. He not only saved 20 of his classmates, but he also survived the incident and recovered completely. On February 14, 2018, a gunman opened fire at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School with a semi-automatic rifle. The shooting claimed the lives of 17 students and faculty members and injured another 17. Anthony Borges, 15, was one of the injured students fighting for his life. Borges shut the classroom door behind him and held it closed with his body. He was shot five times but saved 20 classmates. The bullets ripped through his lungs, legs, and abdomen leaving him critically injured. The adolescent spent two months in the hospital, underwent 13 operations, and eventually recovered completely. Number 2. Hang Gliding Accident Chris Gursky, a US tourist, decided to try out hang gliding while on vacation in Switzerland in November of 2018. Unfortunately, his pilot failed to properly attach him to the flying apparatus, and Gursky was forced to hang on for dear life as the pilot attempted to land safely. The auto parts manager from Florida held on for dear life for about 3 minutes, and it was all captured on video. Fortunately for Gursky, the pilot was able to assist him in holding on with one arm while safely steering the glider with one other, allowing Gursky to safely drop off. Gursky broke his wrist in the fall and tore his bicep from gripping the bar so tightly, but he lived to tell the tale. Number 3. Jungle Plane Crash Julian Kopke, a 17-year-old girl, was sucked out of an airplane after a bolt of lightning struck it. She fell two miles to the ground and survived in the Amazon rainforest for 11 days before being rescued by villagers. On December 23, 1971, Julian was about to graduate. Despite her mother's plan to fly out on the 19th or 20th of December, she insisted on staying until her graduation day. Her mother agreed to extend her stay and book Lanza 508 for Christmas Eve because all other flights were fully booked. The plane was struck by lightning during their flight, which caused it to disintegrate about 2 miles above the ground. Julian was trapped to her seat as she fell out, allowing her to survive the impact with only a broken collarbone and cuts on her legs and hands. She ate a bag of sweets she found at the crash site and moved along a water stream that led her to a waterfall. She survived in a bag of sweets she found at the crash site and made her way along a stream that led her to a cabin. She was rescued after 11 days alone in the jungle by local fishermen who brought her back to their village. She was airlifted to a hospital the following day. Julianne was reunited with her father and after recovering from her injuries, she led rescue teams to the crash site only to learn that her mother had died in the plane crash. Number 4. Three Days Underwater of all the times you could find out if your boat can double as a submarine, 5 a.m. while sitting on the toilet is probably not one of them. But unfortunately, that was the reality that Harrison O'Keen, the cook aboard the tugboat Jackson 4, faced when his world was turned upside down. Literally, the vessel was working in an oil field off the coast of Nigeria when rough seas caused it to capsize, sending it 100 feet to the bottom. While the rest of the crew perished, O'Kane found himself stranded but alive, surviving the flooding by using the only pocket of air available. But while he was alive, he was also cold, wet, and in complete darkness, and wearing nothing but his underwear for three days. Rescuers had no reason to believe anyone was alive on the sunken ship, and it wasn't until divers returned to recover the bodies that the remarkably alive cook was discovered. When a person spends time at depth and under pressure, 
The nitrogen in the air they breathe dissolves into their body tissues. And the longer they're down there, the more that dissolves. If they come to the surface too quickly, the nitrogen can reappear in the form of bubbles in all the wrong places, causing excruciating pain and even death. Keeping this in mind, Okin was brought to the surface in a pressurized diving bell, then confined for two days in a decompression chamber before being released to never go back into a small space again. Number 5. Stuck at Sea Jose Salvador Alvarenga is a Salvadorian fisherman who was stranded at sea for 13 months. He is the first person in recorded history to have spent more than a year at sea in a small boat. On November 17, 2012, Alvarenga embarked on a professional fishing trip with an unknown young fisherman named Ezequiel Cordoba. They planned to spend about 30 hours hunting shark, tuna, and mahi-mahi after setting sail from a fishing village on the Pacific coast of Mexico's southern Chiapas state. A storm struck a few hours into their journey and blew them off course for five days. Alvarenga requested assistance over the ship's radio, but it and much of the rest of the ship were unavailable. Alvarenga requested assistance over the ship's radio, but along with much of the rest of the boat's electronics, it had been rendered inoperable by the storm. The motor on the boat was also damaged. A search party was dispatched, but after two days of unsuccessful searching, their boss gave up and assumed they had drowned. The two fishermen survived by eating raw fish, turtles, and jellyfish when they were alone and without food or supplies. They drank turtle blood and rainwater. Cordoba became severely ill from eating raw food for months and died as the weeks passed. Alvarenga then spent another 9 months at sea alone until he spotted a small island. He almost immediately met a local couple who altered authorities after abandoning his boat and swimming to shore. He had arrived in the Marshall Islands. His journey lasted 438 days and was estimated to cover between 5,500 and 6,700 miles. Number 6. Unluckiest Man Alive Frayn Selak has been dubbed the world's unluckiest man, but he may also be the most generous. Why is he so unlucky? It could be the 1962 incident in which 17 people drowned when a train derailed into a river, but he survived. Or when a plane door blew open, killing 19 people, but he managed to land in a haystack. Or when his bus crashed into a river and he escaped. Or any of the other times he defied fate by surviving everything from being hit by a bus to having his car's fuel tank explode. Oh, and on top of that, after all of this, he won 600,000 euros in the lottery. The first time he ever played. And he decided to give the majority of it away to family and friends. Though he did save some to build a shrine to the Virgin Mary to thank her for watching out for him all these years. Number 7. Two Atomic Bombs How was this even possible? It is horrifying enough to have witnessed the detonation of the Fat Man explosive device that fell on Nagasaki on August 9, 1945. Sutomu Yamaguchi, on the other hand, had already survived the atomic little boy bombing of Hiroshima three days earlier. Yamaguchi was in Hiroshima on business, and the day the atomic bomb was dropped on the city was supposed to be his last day there. Yamaguchi was severely burned by the explosion, and both of his eardrums were ruptured. Yamaguchi arrived at the train station with two co-workers who also survived, and boarded a train bound for Nagasaki where his wife and child lived. When Fat Man detonated, Yamaguchi was in the middle of telling his story to his Nagasaki office. His wife and son miraculously survived as well. Yamaguchi recovered from his radiation exposure and lived until 2010. Number 8. Between a Rock and a Hard Place If you've seen this film 127 hours, you'll be familiar with Aaron Ralston's story. It's a bit of a shocker for those who haven't seen it. Ralston was hiking alone in Blue John Canyon, Canyonlands National Park in Southeast Utah. In 2003, Ralston was hiking alone in Blue John Canyon, Canyonlands National Park in Southeast Utah. A boulder fell and trapped his right arm as he descended into one of the remote and extremely narrow canyons. He survived for five days on packed water and snacks, hoping that someone would find him. The problem was that not only was the location remote, but he hadn't told anyone where he was going. He was forced to amputate his arm by cutting through the bone with his multi-tool, which included a knife, after realizing he might never be found. He began the seven-mile walk back to his truck after freeing himself, and during his journey, he was discovered by a family 
who alerted authorities. During his ordeal, he lost 40 pounds and miraculously avoided bleeding to death. He is now a mountaineer and works as a motivational speaker. Number 9. Surviving in Siberia Karina Chikitova, a 3-year-old girl, and her dog went missing in the Siberian wilderness for 11 days. To survive, she ate berries and drank river water. Her dog eventually found her way back to the village and directed the rescue team to her. On July 27 of 2014, three-year-old Karina Chikitova, accompanied by her dog Naida, began secretly following her father Rodion. She became disoriented and ended up in Siberia's Taiga Forest. Her parents, both unaware that their child was missing, assumed she was with the other. Due to the poor network in the area, her mother only discovered Karina had gone missing after four days. The search and rescue mission was then launched in the Siberian wilderness, which is home to wolves and bears. When all hope seemed lost, Naida returned home on the ninth day, prompting the rescue teams to increase their efforts. Naida eventually led the rescuers to the girl, who was discovered huddled in the tall grass with no serious injuries. When the three-year-old was interviewed, it was discovered that she had survived the wilderness by eating wild berries and drinking river water. And with that, that's it all for today, folks. What do you think? Do you have some bizarre stories you wanted to share? Might as well comment it down below. Who knows, your story will be featured in the next upload. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up so we know what kind of videos to make in the future. And also, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. This has been Get Curious, till next time.